Hello and welcome. Today's project is restoring these louvered shutters. Now, this is the last pair of shutters off of the building that these came off of that I'm restoring. And these actually appear to be the best, in the best condition of all the ones that are off the building. Not compared to the last pair that you are going to see me repairing at the end of the video. But anyway, so these need to be repainted. The paint's kind of faded and like there's drips and runs and it doesn't look too nice. This job is actually a little bit of a daunting job. But there's a few tricks to make this a really easy and really simple job and you'll they'll look great afterwards. The mistake that most people obviously do is they just slap a coat of paint on there and because it's louvered it's hard to get a brush in there and that's how you get all runs and drips and crap like that. As you can see, there's the screw, and I could just leave that, but it wouldn't look very pretty. So I'm scraping the paint out of it with the speed heater, the speed heater curl brush. This is a pretty good tool. I've stripped a lot of paint with it. It doesn't make as much as much fumes as um, a regular old heat gun because it's a lower temperature, and it actually works better. I still wear a respirator when I'm using it because it smells pretty bad, but presumably the fumes aren't as toxic as with a traditional um, heat gun. And if I wanted to do a really nice job, I would strip the whole shutter with this tool rather than sanding and planing. However, you still have to sand after you um, strip just the light sand to get rid of any residue. The next step is to take the shutters apart. So as you can see, I've numbered all the louvers because on these shutters, each louver is slightly different. Now some shutters, I'll show you a different pair in a minute. All the louvers are identical and that doesn't matter. But on this one, all the louvers are slightly different. So you have to get them back in their exact spot. So I've numbered them all on this side. So the number go to the side that doesn't have the bottom hinge on it and it's on the side that has the hinges on it. Now I'll show you how to keep track of that once you paint it later but for now that's what just needs to be done. And then the pins, this, these shutters are pinned together 
with just wooden dowels. And I'm going to replace the dowels because when you hammer these dowels out, they kind of compress. So if you reuse them, you can reuse them, but you're going to have like a big, big dent where they were. So I'm just going to hammer them out and then drill them. And you have to hammer them out first because the holes are not straight. So now some shutters will be glued, some shutters will be nailed. But thankfully, these shutters are just two pegs per um, per cross piece, and that's it. There's no glue, no nails. Um, some of them have been replaced. Some of the other sets I did have been replaced with nails. And thankfully, all the places where they'd been replaced with nails were all rotted out, and I was replacing anyway. So I, I don't really have much of an idea of how to extract the nails because the nails they use are kind of like a little flower shape and I think the best way is to just drill a little hole all the way around and then just pull them out and replace them with pegs because pegs are the best way to put something like this together because you can take it apart and there's absolutely no reason why you need to nail these in fact I'd almost say that the pegs are gonna last longer and hold it much tighter than the nails are so just real quick, this is a set of shutters my dad is working on for this house. And you can see all the louvers are identical and they do not have a peg on the end. They're just in this little routed groove. So with if your shutters are like this, you don't have to worry about keeping them and keeping track of them. They don't always come out that easy. could sand this off but it'll just be a lot easier and leave a much nicer result to take this part of the paint off with the infrared heater.
it's now time to clean up all the louvers. As you can see on the ends, there's bits of paint. So I'm going to use the power planer. Um, yes, it is going to destroy a pair of blades, but I've only used one side of blades for all the other shutters that I've done. And a set of blades for the planer is like 10 bucks, so it is fully worth it to just wreck a side of planer blades um, for this job rather than trying to sand it. Now, ultimately, I would strip them with the speed heater. That would be the best because I would not be removing any wood. But because these have the peg on the end, if they're a little bit thinner, it's not ideal, but it is okay. So, if you want to take the time, I would definitely say it's better to just strip them with the speed heater. But, I'm on a bit of a time budget, so I'm just going to plane them. I'm now going to put the top coat on. I put two coats of top coat. And I'm using this stuff. It is Tolan's. In case you're wondering how I keep all of the louvers in order, the first time I had them all numbered, so I just laid them out by number, and all the numbers have to line up on the shutter. The second time I won't be able to see the numbers so I'll just line them all up on the bench like I'll take them out one at a time. I'll line them up all on the bench and then I'll put them all back one by one as I paint them in, ex in the exact order that I took them out. It, it is a little bit difficult and you have to pay attention but as long as you pay attention and keep track of um, where you are and which way you're putting them it's fine and also on this these shutters, no two louvers are the same, so it's pretty much, in order to get them all perfect, they're only going to fit one way. Like, even if we take this one out and turn it around, see, it's no longer, it's no longer flush, so that is not where, the way it goes, so if, if it does look like that, I know that I need to turn it around. So that's how I um, keep track of them all, and yeah, as long as you pay attention, it works. And also, on some shutters, it appears that like all the louvers are the same, but I, I guess these were handmade by, um, it, it seems weird. Like, obviously, whoever made these did not have a jig that they were making them in, because each louver is different, so... I don't understand how they, like, how they got the hole in a slightly different spot for each louver, but it, it's handy that they're all different for repainting.
So I have taken to wearing a mask when painting, particularly because this Tolan's paint is really strong and there is not good ventilation down here. So I'm using this 3M reusable mask with an AKE, uh, ABEK1 filter with a P3 dust filter before it. When looking for masks, I could not really find um, any information on what mask is good to wear for like just regular painting. Even sp for spray painting, I couldn't really find anything. So I kind of just went with this because it's good for inorganic and organic gases and dust. So I figure it's probably going to filter everything out and I can't smell the paint through it. So if you know what mask is best for um, paint fumes, leave a comment down below because I'd be interested to know. So they're reassembled, painted with two coats of good paint and a coat of primer. So I'm now going to put the hardware back on and I'm going to touch up the places that I couldn't paint. And I, when I touch them up, I only use good paint. That way I don't have any primer spots that I've missed. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm putting a little bit of silicone along the top of the long hinges just to keep water out, but I'm only putting it on the top so that if any water does manage to get in, it can still drain out the bottom.
for simple little repairs like this where I still have the piece I'm just going to glue it back in all this wood is still good so that is fine and for all the repairs I'm using tight bond 3 interior exterior wood glue it says it's waterproof so a lot of people seem to swear by this brand of glue so that's what I'm using and it's also what I had lying around so I'll just blow the dust out So this one and all the other pieces are the same. It has a repair that's already been done. It's not very solid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to inlay a piece of wood. And I'm also going to continue it long enough and get rid of this big gouge here. So I'm going to fix two things with one repair. So it's not that hard. Um, on other shutters I did, I just put a big piece of wood over top things like this. That certainly works. It certainly is probably stronger. However, it doesn't look as good. And it's not as challenging. So that's what I'm going to do for this one. And it's what I've done on the other pieces for this set of shutters.
So right here, there was that big lump of putty that I took out, and this is actually, this hole is supposed to, well, it's not supposed to be there, but that part is, because this is where the, the cross piece was tied in, and obviously it rotted off, and somebody just stuffed putty in there. Because it's rotted on the it's actually rotted all the way across on the other side. This side is still actually somewhat solid. So that's why I'm just doing a small inlay on this side because we can see like here and here there's still good solid wood. So I'll just take this and do like I did on all the others. And then I'll flip it around and do the same thing on the other side, much bigger obviously. Because I am making a new cross piece because the old one, it's all rotted off on the end, so I can't reuse that. Up here, I probably am going to have to do something about that. And leaving that is not good because this is the top, so water can get in there. If it were on the bottom like this, I wouldn't care. But because it's the top, it needs to be repaired. But anyway... That is how I'm fixing this. Now these shutters, I almost have to say that they're on the cusp of just needing to be replaced. But making that call would be a little difficult because although the amount of labor probably wouldn't be that much different just making new ones. Um, obviously you'd have to buy materials and there's still a lot of good wood in these shutters aside from the few places w like this where they're garbage like this is still fine right here like this piece is fine now i don't know what it's like on this end but and all, all the cross pieces the the louvers they were pretty good too i mean they're they're a little spongy but they're still they still have life left in them so it's kind of like just just fix them and get on with it because definitely these shutters are probably going to need to be replaced the next time they need painting. But these repairs will probably extend 
extend them a little longer anyway. So this is what I've come up with. So I routed this out and then I routed it out here because this was the only place where it was rotten to the edge. All of this is fine. So you can really see what kind of a hole was in here. It basically was rotted all the way across. So that's why I went a little deeper with this one and a lot longer because it needs to be structural. <laughs> end piece or the bottom on this one needs to be replaced just like on the other one this is what it currently looks at like the only reason it needs to be replaced is because the end snapped off so I'm just gonna take some of this 50 by 150 construction lumber and mill it down now yes I know this is pine however finding hard I don't have any hardwood lying around and for the how good the wood that's in the shutter is pine will last just as long and this wood wasn't anything hard to begin with it was some sort of pine like pitch pine or something so construction lumber it is so the one shutter the one side it is all ready to be painted it is fixed this is the new piece on the bottom here and it is all sanded. I now have to work on the other side and as you can see there's only two uprights and a bit of rotten plywood at the base. I didn't film fixing the other shutter because this this side is going to be a lot more interesting because I need to make a new panel at the base. I have to make a new cross piece for there. I have to make a new top and probably the most difficult part is I need to make a new bottom and as you can see the old bottom has been lopped off at some point so there is no um, mortise anymore and it's already been fixed so the end already has two big screw holes in it but I'll figure something out so yeah it will only take a few minutes for you guys to watch, but it'll probably be a week or two for me.
to smooth this and mill this panel down to the right size, I'm going to use what you could call the poor man's CNC. So what this is, is I have a piece of wood, one here, one there on either side. I screwed them down to the bench, which I don't really like doing, but you have to do that sometimes. And then this metal sled, it rides on the pieces of wood. And then I can slide the plunge rotor back and forth. One thing I'm going to say, if you're using a plunge rotor, make sure that you have the depth locked in. The first time I did this, I only was relying on the quick release, and it moved on me. So it's very important that you, on this router anyway, this locks it down, this locks it up. It can't go anywhere. Another thing is, is you want to, after you do the first few passes, you want to re-tighten your bit. Because, again, the first time I did this, after I figured out about the quick release, it seemed like the bit moved a bit on me. So you want to make sure that that is locked in. So to hold the workpiece down to the bench, I've just got two pieces of scrap wood here, and I've got them on an angle and clamped down. And then on the other side, I just have regular old clamps. And when I want to do the edges, I'll probably just screw a piece of wood from here to here with another piece underneath and that will hold it down. I'm using laminated wood because it's all I have and it just so happens that the width I need is exactly on the glue joint. So I'm just ripping it down the glue joint and getting pretty decent wood. I'm using the router table to put the angle on this. This is my dad's router table. It's run by a Bosch router. So, I did try using the table saw to do this, but I think it's just a lot more precise to use the router. The table saw, if you're careful, it can cut pretty good 45 degree angles, but I, for small stuff like this, it is just a lot more precise to use the router table, especially since I have to do both sides. Now, yeah, I know my hands are going to get pretty close to the blade. I tried using this thing, but it, it, yeah, it didn't work. Um, I think if I wanted to make a um, something to properly push these, it would need to have a little lip to push here and a little lip to push here so that I could push it against the fence and push it through. Um, now if you don't have a router table, how I would do this, and I did do this before I got out the router table, is I would just line it up perfectly with something else that is straight, like a piece of plywood or another piece of wood. Then the bearing on your router bit, just set it just below the material you're cutting, because I'm, cu I'm cutting the whole way through. So you have your bearing run along the piece of material you've lined it up with, and that way you can cut an angle without a router table or any other profile with a bit with a bearing on it. So that would work too, but because I need to make about 15 of these, I'm just using the router table because it is faster and easier. But if you don't have a router table or only want to make two or three, 
lining it up with another piece of wood, clamping it down, and just running your router along it works just as well. So after making that panel, the next step is to make a new bottom, a new cross piece, and a new top for this one. They're all pretty much the same, so I'm going to make this cross piece right now, and I will show you making that. And then I will just show you the things that have to be done differently for the top. And the bottom is going to be really interesting on this one, as I've said. But it's, it really is not hard to make. These parts, now for me, because I don't have wood that is the appropriate size, uh, it's going to be quite diff well, not difficult, but it's going to take a while because I have to mill a 50 by 150 down to 32 by 100. So that is a lot of material that has to be moved, removed, and because I don't have a bandsaw, it all has to come off with the planer. Now, this is my dad's jointer. It's an iron hell. I've never used the actual joiner part of it. I've only ever used the thickness planer part of it. it. It seems to be okay. I don't think it's the most precise tool in the world. But the only annoying thing about this is the it's been used so much. The blades are... I don't know if you can see in there. No, you can't really see. But the blades are so dull that it's like you have to take quarter millimeters off at a time or else it just makes a big mess of the workpiece. Now they are the kind of blades that can be sharpened but no one's ever done that so most I'll just use this to make it parallel to each other and I'll probably remove most of the material with my handheld planer. Wasn't looking forward too much to having to take almost two centimeters off of this with the planer but then I thought, why not just take some of it off with the table saw? Here's my piece of wood after going through the planer. So I need to cut the tenon now. So this is how deep the tenon needs to be. Then two little marks on the edge there signify here and here. I'm not caring about this distance right now. For now it is just the thickness of this and this and then I can cut those later.
I usually cut it a little big and then I adjust it with a chisel and I like to take the rasp and just round the edges over because the, the mortises are not square. <laughs> have it all test fitted together. I have some of the old slats plus the new slats in just to make sure that it's the right shape and size. So now I'm drilling the peg holes and I'm going to peg it on the bottom. That way when I put it back together if there's any paint or anything in the way I can still get it back to the proper shape. I need to put the bottom on here, so I've milled up this piece. I've already cut the this part in on the drop saw. So I now need to put um, a nice little chamfer on it, and I need to cut the groove in the middle, and then I need to attach it. But I'm going to cut the groove and cut the chamfers before I attach it. So I have the bottom just clamped on with strips of wood and clamps and then as you saw I drilled a deep countersink for the screws I have just here and now I'm going to drill with a 4mm bit. These are 6x140 screws. I'm going to drill as far as the bit can go and then I'm going to come back with my 12mm auger bit. I'm going to drill some holes for pegs so that it is screwed and pegged. The screws are really just to hold it on the wood, like to hold the bottom on the old piece of shutter, whereas the pegs are to keep it from twisting. And I'm using 13 millimeter pegs because I don't have um, 12 millimeter pegs and I don't have a long enough 12 millimeter bit. But I have a little trick to make the 13 millimeter pegs actually fit in the 12 millimeter auger hole that I'll show you in a minute.
So there's the panel. Turned out pretty nice. I think so anyway. Um, I just filled those knots with a little bit of putty. It'll be dry and I'll sand it off in a few minutes. An interesting thing I'd like to point out is although the frames of these shutters were in such rotten conditions all the slats are pretty good I mean yeah some of them the wood is a little soft but for the most part I mean all the ends are still intact they aren't broken I only replaced five out of um, there's 88 between the two of these I only replaced five of them the rest of them are fine whereas on the other shutters the other um, pairs I've done of these, I've replaced a lot more. I think the last um, pair, no, last time I had two pairs, I think I did like 12 or 15, maybe even 20 slats between the four shutters. Whereas this time I've only had to do five. So it is interesting how, although there were parts of these shutters that were in just such horrible condition, the slats are still fine.